Hello, and welcome to episode two. You're not going to believe what we have to share with you today. So first of all, can I start? I want to start. Absolutely. Yes. Cool if I you, start? you more than welcome to start. Thank you. So we have two things from the father for you today. One just happened. So for reference, for the sake of the listeners, I'm in the car driving home currently from, from work. And as we're discussing what we're going to talk about on the show today, I look out of the corner of my eye, and I see six, eight women, uh, as far as I can tell, wearing white bonnets on their heads in long black robes, and they're at the exit of a car wash in the small town that I currently live in. I have no idea why. That seems very odd. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to say that's a little terrifying. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, a little bit. Yeah. I'm yeah. all for fashion, but right. that's conspicuous. I mean, I, I'm i assuming it was a play. There's a high school nearby. There's probably a plausible explanation. But in lieu of that, we're going to think that there's something nefarious going on. And later in town, you know, there might be demons. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> You That's can't cross crazy. it off the list yet. To be, very fa- odd. to be fair, it is. It may or may not be the Midwest. So, I don't know. Well, yeah. But good things come from the Midwest. I mean, like, there's corn. That's true. It's true. Uh, and, you know, we're two weeks out from Halloween, so it's... Yes, it's pumpkins. All, it all kind of makes sense, but it's at the same time, it's a little, it's a little odd, right? I'm not sure why they were directly in front of where cars would come out of a car wash that might run them over. But that's beside the point. Uh, speaking of which, is uh, yes. is the trick-or-treating season happening this year? Because you know what? I I don't know. I don't really know. was kind of sad. I, I just went to Costco last year, and I bought yeah. a ton of candy. And in, in spirit of promoting diabetes awareness. And I went to... Yes as many places as I could. So I actually went to the fire department and then I went to a, um, this place that takes uh secondhand clothes. I also went there and, uh, ah. yeah, Reese's pieces and Snickers, man. If they have those in King size, I'm buying them. Like Costco's oh day of sale is the best. Yes. It's like, it's, yeah, it's really the promised land. No, it's funny you say that because, um, You know, as you know, my spouse is huge into decor, and she's already started setting up our our yard for the Halloween. And, uh, you know, we have no idea. We we just moved, for the reference of everybody else, we just moved in April of this year uh, farther north in the state that we're in. And we don't know, right? We have no idea. There's not a lot of young kids around, so I have no idea if people are going to show up or not. And what's funny is, like, even during the hype, COVID last year, uh, we had more kids last year at our old house than I, I'd ever had before. I should, I could have combined five years of worth of trick or treaters and it wouldn't have accumulated that many people. It's crazy. It's cool. Yeah. I, I don't think I maybe had like a couple of people come by, but for the most part, Uh not at all. And it was just, it it wasn't as exciting, I guess. Um, and it didn't seem like, I don't know. I just, I, I think that's fun. It's a fun time of year, you know? Yeah, we, uh, in order to, like, you know, curb, I guess, people's fears, we, uh, we have this huge, like, Frankenstein kind of statue thing that's made out of resin, and the, the candy goes in his brain. Like, if you scoop his brain out, that's where the candy goes. Oh, nice. So we, we put him, like, way out on the sidewalk away from the house, and then we just played spooky music and shit and kind of hung out on the porch and people were cool you know i mean and then they could just help themselves it was kind of fun yeah yeah it worked i'd totally get behind that that sounds amazing yeah i i don't know i'm hoping for a good trick-or-treating season and you're gonna hold me to it i'm gonna get a pumpkin yeah. okay i may or may not have an actual um driving uh car right now um, but uh-huh. I do have a uh, Kawasaki H2, and that is my grocery getter. And nice. I will stuff a pumpkin in a backpack, and I'm gonna 
cut that thing to make it look like, uh, <laughs> let's say, a Pokeball. I've done that before, sure. but I think I could do a better Pokeball, and then I need to have it slightly back, reserved away from the Pokemon I'm going to have it catch uh-huh. it. So I, I, I haven't decided exactly <laughs> which one, but uh, Pikachu was the other year. That's a great idea, dude. I love it. I figured you were going to go uh, all headless horseman on me since you were on your motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I, you know, I I don't play around on that motorcycle. Like, I mean, it's it's mildly terrifying. By terrifying, I mean that is the most dangerous vehicle I've had the pleasure of riding. And I love every You're not minute rough. of it, but man, it is dangerous. I seem to recall when you got it, multiple friends of ours that were motorcycle enthusiasts said something along the lines of, you're crazy and probably going to die. I'm pretty sure that was a direct quote. Yeah, yeah, that was a thing, you know. Um, I think it was like 2016 or 20, it's, it's a 2016 model, so. Um, yeah. So it'd be the second year that it came out, but it set like the land speed record at like, I don't know. I can't remember. It was like 400 km on a bridge, which didn't make sense to me. It seemed really dangerous. And I mean, it seems I might like- be wrong on that number there, so do not quote me. Um, but it was a record of sorts for a bridge. I got it. Well, okay, so I will give you uh, one story here. Please and do. You were... You were just talking about SD cards, so you'll laugh at this. So, I will not name our, our employer, or your former employer, but I will just say a large Fortune 400 company that I work for, in the, uh, in the ill-advised way that IT rolls there, they determined, in order to try to fool, I guess, the, the clientele, of, of our office, they were going to send out SD cards loaded, you ready for this, with malware, and my goal was to try to leave this around the office to see if people would just pick it up and throw it in their machine, okay? <laughs> You're kidding, right? Does this already sound preposterous? I'm completely dead serious. This actually happened, okay? So... Uh... I did it, right? And I was like the cybersecurity, you know, lead of our office, right? So here's the funny part, right? I don't know if it's a cultural thing, whatever. No one ever picked it up, right? I left it on the printer. I left it in the break room. I left it in the kitchen. Always just sat there. Uh, No one ever even picked it up and brought it back up front to the admin. No one touched it. So good. Good job, team, right? Like you'd hope that's what would happen. But I figured like, oh, surely... Somebody who is perhaps a veteran employee, ready to be retired, would foolishly pick it up and plug it in just to see what's on it, right? No, nope, it's never happened. Yeah, I, 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 would, I okay. wouldn't think anybody would. I mean, everybody's so, super chill in the offices. Right. Here's the funny part. As time went on, I lost track of it. Now I'm terrified of putting SD cards hurts into my machine because I can't remember which damn card is the bad one. So in lieu of that, I have actually had to buy all new cards because I don't remember which one the malware is loaded on. Right. Your card? Why didn't you just format every card? Well, I mean, obviously I will, but I have old ones that look identical to it that I have, like, pictures and shit on of, like, family photos and stuff. No, and I... now I, I'm terrified I'm, I'm going to put the wrong card. Yeah, I have a, I have a <laughs> terrible problem with purging data that I shouldn't have done, you know? Like, um, that's why I have a hot or not pile, you know what I mean? It's like... Right, right. You know, but uh, I still screw up from time to time, like... um. I had some sure. footage on my motorcycle. Um, I must have deleted about 800 gigs. Not even trying. Oh, God. That's, that's but it, it's it's all in the pursuit of something better, man. We don't look I back. I understand. No, we do not. Always no. straight forward. 
Yes. No, I mean, but yes. like, there's always little hurdles like that. You know, you're always going to climb up. So like I was in motion. I was oh. telling you this earlier and I was not aware that it doesn't just straight up auto save like you'd have in like a final cut pro application. So right. me and my ignorance, uh, you know, I'm just going ham on this project and, um, about 10 hours in, I'm like thinking, Oh yeah. So my, it looks like my, my timing on my, my videos wrong. It's only like 50 some seconds. And then boom, I lost the project and, uh, oh. never do that. So I think I'm going to introduce a, like, uh, <laughs> a five minute save protocol or something, but, uh, uh -huh. these little lessons, right. you know, these are, these are little blessings that we get. They are, they are. I mean, I, I know we don't look at it that way in the moment, but that, that is true. You know, but it, you won't do it again. Is, you see what I mean? Like if it's really bad, true, true, true. There's no way it could go do it again. You know? <laughs> I mean that to your point, you know, earlier today when we were talking about what we were going to cover, I mean, it, you know, you learn from mistakes. I hope, I mean, that's, I just, I don't look at things like that as an absolute failure. Right. I, I look at it as I'm learning all the time, but I realize the way we look at things is, you know, perhaps a little bit different than our, our peers. You know, I mean, that's why I, I really enjoy training people or meeting new folks because I always learn something. You know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not the penultimate expert on anything, you know? No. Oh, yeah. And I think like the second you start thinking that is the second you're like saying, you know, right. maybe I'm not going to learn, you know, maybe, maybe it's okay not to, you know, do this thing today, but I promise it's always better to go the extra mile. I don't know right no you're completely right getting out of the car now we're going to be really professional here. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic and, fantastic yeah, it's, it's one of those things where you just you got to be you know you got to be i don't know just open to change and i mean look if i was driving straight forward today and, and not paying attention i wouldn't have had some wonderful story about you know strange women Laying in ponds and, you know. Exactly. <laughs> outside the car wash that's, doing the various schemes, right? That, that's, that is very true, you know. Probably some sort of weird political affiliation that we can't discuss on here. I don't know. It's odd. It's, it's crazy. Odd. Oh, and as a follow-up. Hmm. So I did, I did some follow-up for us um, from our first episode. Okay. And there was this scan that was going on in... Um, in California and it was like this like this green scan thing that like I don't know everybody was assuming it was yes. like something nefarious I, or I know weird. exactly what you're talking about and it looked like a go ripple ahead. going over the water almost you, you, you yep. know what I mean yep I know exactly what you're referencing okay so I was like I saw the video I was like, that's strange. And I think I referred to it in the other episode. And I, and I really don't check out this guy's page too much. I, I was just like, just getting baseline information, like as far as um, like where air traffic is and stuff like that, because it seems to correlate with like UAP stuff. So mm -hmm. correct. Uh, he actually spoke to it and he's like, well, that's definitely a military, but he has no idea what that tech was. And he said he was working on some pretty high end um, projects uh, being monkey works or whatever. And I just found that quite interesting. He did not speak to the East Coast uh, sightings that you had referred to. Sure. Uh, but he did speak to that other one. So I thought that was really cool. And then... Um, I don't know, just checking out Reddit, there was another resurgence of that sighting in uh, Russia. It was kind of like floating in the water or something. I believe it was Russia. It looks super strange. But that's kind of, all these photos and things are like making resurgences and I think it's really interesting. And you checked out um, a documentary yourself, didn't you? I did. I checked out the Cosmic Hoax today and thank you very much for uh, recommending that. I found it fantastic and very interesting, and I'm sure we'll discuss it on more than one uh, episode. 
Let me plug some headphones in here. Here we go. Yeah. Um, one one point, I guess, about the uh, the green light that was that was seen out over the water. I read down to the comments of that, and like a number of people came up with a pretty plausible explanation. They're like, um, "You do know that there's there's planes for Google and the military and other things that." head over top of, you know, land masses and things, and they're just scanning topography, and that's how we make 3D maps. That's totally normal. <laughs> but to your point, I think we've hit some sort of critical mass with information in the populace where all of a sudden there's a lot more people looking. And I think that's cool, right? Because we're going to get false flags, sure, right? Going to happen. But... I'm hoping, right, it also gives us more evidence of whatever is going on, right? Whether we think it's man-made, extraterrestrials, um, other, you know. I completely I, I think agree. We're, I, yeah, we're, I, we're hitting a really exciting time. Yeah, absolutely, man, because you, like, you've got, like, true professionals, like, with real credentials and real proven track histories that, you know, are coming out of the woodwork and talking about all these exciting things that they may or may not have actually seen. Um, it's, I mean, right now, exactly. I, I always feel like it's best to be skeptical just because like you said, sure. there's too yeah. many stories. It's just like, right. Y'all been sitting on this for like 60 years. Yeah, know. precisely. dude. It's, it's just, it's very fascinating to me about where all this is coming out now. Right. And, so I guess if you want to if you want to dive into the topic of discussing cosmic hoax, um, so for the listeners at home, uh, we've now both watched it. I believe you watched it probably more than once. Yeah, I've watched it a couple times. Um, so we haven't really talked about it off air, right? No, we have not. You know, so a few things, right? And for people who haven't seen it, uh, Dr. Stephen Greer has put out a documentary on UAP. And just kind of culminating his theories, this is very recent, right? It just came out, uh, what, a month ago, even? I don't even know if it's that long ago. Very might have been recent. June or July. Yeah. It, this summer. It might have been sure. June, July. Yeah. Is he, it might have been June. I think I've, I've, got a, I've got this feeling that it was like June. But it was definitely this year, and it's only just starting yeah. to make resurgences now. So it's coming Correct. out like Very soon. current. Right. And what's, what's interesting about this now, I mean, you can... I guess, argue about it or, or discuss, you know, his theories, which are very sensational, very interesting, you know, and it, and it discusses not only UAP, but also his thoughts about what's going on with the military industrial complex with governments around the world. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to dig into in there, right? Yeah. I, I would say regardless of what, people believe on whether they're extraterrestrials or not. Cause I, so let me back up two things I took away from this, right? So we can parcel out extraterrestrials and that's interesting. Agreed. But the other side of this is what's going on from a terrestrial standpoint about governments, the military craft, things they're doing to the populace, um, shifting public opinion, disinformation, people, Okay, we know all that's real, right? Now, whether or not he's right or not is, is almost immaterial. I'm just going to make a claim that we know that things happen to the general populace and various governments trying to influence opinion. Fact. Fact. Right? It's been yeah, proven. Exactly. Because, like, you could I'll riddle me this, Batman. <clears throat> so if nobody's ever done something, then why is there a law in place? Mm. see what i'm saying good like point. this has already no, been talked about point. in court and had to get aired out in court i can't remember the exact year but i think it was like sometime in the 80s um this topic was um discussed in like a need for oversight or something um we'll have sure. to that'll be my next follow-up i'll have to do some more homework sure yeah at this point i mean for the sake of listeners um we're just kind of delving into this topic in the past, what, not even a year, I guess. So we haven't memorized dates and names and places and faces yet, but we'll get there. Um, I just think it's an interesting topic for people to dive into because 
you know, there's all kinds of things you can tease out of this, right? Like, are there advancements in science that we're not privy to that would make our lives easier, um, reduce dependence on fossil fuels, just in general kind of elevate society? And, and I think there's a lot of experts that would say, yeah, you know, whether or not you say it's extraterrestrial or clandestine governments or whatever, I mean, that's up for debate. But I mean, one fact that we can agree on is we're not given all the advancements that we should be, you know? Yeah, I, I, I agree, man. You know, like, I mean, like, just think about it this way. So, like, and I already talked about my motorcycle, but, like, okay, so this is, like, let's break it down. Like, I really got that thing because I was, like, seeing all of these electric cars and everything coming out, and I was, like, well... There's probably no way I can afford a supercar before they become obsolete or all electric. If they all become electric, nobody's going to want them. I mean, kind of, maybe. Like for like the sensation of like a really fast, like a one gear vehicle. But like, right, right. Let's like, let's be real. There, there's no like excitement. You've removed the personality. <laughs> of said vehicle and it's mm -hmm. like it, it's like the last piece of anything made in the next 10 years are going to be part of this like timeless piece of history like uh, as we progress into you know getting rid of fossil fuels and it, i guess mm -hmm. if you listen to greer we should have probably been off them like almost 100 years ago 80 80 years ago so yeah, and I mean, for, again, for people who aren't familiar with Dr. Stephen Greer, he's not just some random internet person or a talking head. I mean, he has legitimately been the advisor for multiple presidents, heads of state. I think it was state. four presidents, right? He, uh, four different presidents, yeah. He yeah. goes through his whole lineage, and I mean, he's been privy to all kinds of conversations and led discussions on this and has been kind of the person at the forefront of advising um, our government in the United States, along with a number of world leaders, like he is not just some guy chasing cash. Right. And I, and I bring that up because a lot of people say that's why he's doing it. Right. He's just trying to turn a buck now in retirement. And, and I'm like, there's a lot easier ways he could, he could make money than than really putting himself out there to be a target, right? Because yeah, if even ten percent, we'll say, of what he is discussing is true, he's painting an enormous target right on his face. You know, agreed. But like, I mean, he did lose his best friends, and like, I don't know, it's pretty sad, you know. Like, uh, his story is, like, pretty sad. And, like, I, I mean, I, I'm even reading the Bob Lazar story, and, I mean, it's really, it's really sad. Like, I mean, not even his, his actual story, not the event right. of going and working that job. Just, like, his, the love of his life getting cancer and dying, and then, like, sure. yeah. he gets connected with, um some other lady that um his wife introduced him to and i i guess more or less because she introduced him i mean it's just like it's really sad mm -hmm. stuff man yep no i i agree with you 100 percent. speaking of which this is just a total aside but i don't know if you know how old dr stephen greer is but that guy clearly has some sort of secret to longevity because he looks awesome <laughs> yeah, how old is he i don't know but i mean i would guess based on the things in his documentary and ce5 and some of the things he does i'm guessing that he does yoga and works out and obviously has a, a really good meditative practice that he uses um i just i see him and go this guy is highly intelligent very well read and clearly has an awesome mind-body connection and Maybe some people resonate with it and other people probably think he's a kook, right? I mean, yeah, I think so. And like, 
you know, and, and for those listeners here, um, what, what they're always saying is, um, like the, his CE five events, but honestly, it's kind of like a community. You know, it's like bringing mm. people together in localities. Like you can ping in the app to go and, you know, connect with other people who might entertain the idea of yoga, uh, meditation to, um, to have come some kind of an experience, I guess. Um, I have not tried it myself. Do I have the CE5 app? Yes, I do. Because I never know when I'm going to break down on my motorcycle and we're just going to need somebody else to cart me away. It's true. It's true. And, and I think that's smart, right? You should clearly, you know, go out of your way to kind of reach higher consciousness. In case you break down on the road, we're going to use uh, extraterrestrials as our version of AAA. Exactly. You, you know, you never know. They say they can <laughs> travel at over or even just under the speed of light. Uh, so we're expecting expedited services. I mean, I, yeah, I, I mean, Amazon can deliver same day, but what can the extraterrestrials do for us? That's what I want to know. It, yeah, but their bottleneck is like a whole bunch of brokered carrier kind of situations. Oh, yeah. Point. Point. So like, my stuff. I don't know about if you've placed an order on Amazon in a while, but um, you, it might be a couple of days. Not that even that that's that long. Like, let's be real. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. Yeah. Yeah. My story from today, we had dropped the wife's car off for um, check engine light and they had a recall on something on her Hyundai, you know, Hyundai, however you pronounce it, Hyundai. And what was interesting is uh, the parts and things they needed, which Mind you, you know, every time they give you some song and dance on what's cracked or broken in your vehicle, you're like, is that, is that real? Is that even, is that even a real part? Did you just make that up? But anyway, that's beside the point. They definitely. The point is they were mentioning that, you know, there's six to eight months out to get parts. Yeah. And I thought that was completely just bizarre. I mean, I know because, you know, we're fully aware that there's all these tankers out of the ocean just like out there chilling playing parts easy whatever they're doing and we can't unload them because there's no people on the docks but so riddle me this i was thinking about this today so if there's all these tankers out there with food on them and parts and computer equipment and whatever the hell right you know as well as i do there's always these stories that surface every year about those cargo containers dumping on the ocean right? From storms and everything else. Yeah. How long will it be until there's some sort of catastrophic accident? I shouldn't laugh. I mean, it's, it's serious, but you know, storms, tsunamis, I mean, things come up. We can't just like leave them chilling in the ocean forever. I mean, at what point do we like, I don't know, enlist the military to go airlift them to see, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. Assuming you believe that this is real and there's not some sort of, you know, ulterior motive or fabricated story going on. Cause like, yeah, I'm still really struggling with supply chain, having that kind of mass issues. I mean, I don't know about you, but my life hasn't been severely impacted yet, you know? Yeah. And I think it's like part normalcy bias part, like we've seen supply chain. So like, yeah, you have a little bit different understanding of it, um, which we won't really talk about at all. Uh, but I w basically I I just think that it's it's unfortunate that they're on the water. Yeah. It's kind of a reserve parachute in a way, because if I, mean, I don't know if you've been keeping up with what's happening in the world um, and, and that's the worst type of reserve uh, anybody would want, but uh, apparently they're having power issues in mainland China, and that's being impacted by like the twenty some percent of real estate that they're you know over indexing mm. um, on, and, and that's kind of like influencing their GDP in a massive sure. way. And unfortunately, I don't know it how their production is going to be because I, from what I've heard, 
um, production's been struggling. And then from what I've read, I've I've also heard that. But um, obviously, we have to cross-verify all this information, so more sure, follow-up sure. for the next episode. But uh, what I will say is it's horrible, mm-hmm. but it's good that they that there are goods in some capacity somewhere because if they weren't made or not available, I mean, they're not available this moment, Mm. but we'll probably get most of those boats in by what what do you think? Month? I I don't know. I don't know. Cause I mean, it it sounds like it's a compounded problem at this point and it seems like it's getting worse over time, not better. Um, You know, because I mean, it makes sense. It's a domino effect. It is. As things stack up, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And, you know, people may not realize, like, you know, people are still producing food and other other manufactured items, but they're missing things like corrugate cardboard or glass. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's things I don't think people really think about unless you're in that ecosystem. And it's, uh, it's clearly a challenge, you know, and it's... Yeah. continuing to be a problem. Uh, the other thing I was going to say about China, I don't know if you saw the story from a couple of weeks ago, there was a uh, an issue with drones being hacked. And the hackers uh, basically cut power, if I understand it right. So in, in some of the main cities, they were showing video of just these tiny starlights cascading down from the sky and crashing to the streets. It looked like, um, I don't know, some major movie production where you just see uh, all these like little fairy lights falling to the ground. But there was that many drones falling <laughs> up above the city down to the street. It was crazy to watch. Yeah. I, that's, I've never seen anything like it. That's pretty unbelievable. I, I mean, but there are so many things that are like unbelievable that are happening right now. And like, sure, is sure. hacking possible? Sure. Yeah, are a lot of these things that like we were talking about real? Sure. A lot of things are a lot of real, but like here's the most real thing, folks. If you do not buy toilet paper, you probably don't have toilet paper at home. If you rely on the store to carry that one roll of toilet paper that you've been procrastinating to buy, it may not be there. So probably buy it or paper mache. I don't know. It's true. It's you you true. know, like, it's kind of like uh, practicing, right? You're never really going to get better in, until you actually try it. And, like, I mean, I didn't know anything about, like, uh, I guess, I'm not going to say prepping, but, like, I don't know. I never really thought beyond, oh, I'm going to Wendy's today. They've got a really right. good uh, frosty, you know, that I got to check out. This is the vanilla flavor. It's wild. I mean, as uh, InfoSec friends of mine will point out, you know, our our entire internet system and how we operate these days and mainstream society is very fragile. You know, and it's it's mm-hmm. not that way everywhere, but especially major cities like New York, for instance, because it's an older major, you know, metropolitan area in the United States. Uh, their whole infrastructure system is very tenuous. I mean, if somebody sneezes at the wrong time, that whole grid's gone. (laughs) And, like, obviously they'll get it back up, but I I just don't think people understand, like, exactly how we live day to day, moment to moment. You know, and and we've talked about this before with, like, cell phones and things like that because they're made out of some pretty precious materials for the batteries. Um, Oh, yeah. I I mean, you know, I mean, we're running on a timeline that's running out. Right. Yeah, yeah, like I don't think people are too. I, I, you're right. Mm-hmm. I, I just think I, it's very sad that um, people really don't like. I don't know, prepare in any kind of way. Like, um, but like, and I'm guilty of it too. Every once in a while, but at at the same time, I've got so much canned food stacked up at home. But mm-hmm. yes, I do go and get the daily burrito. Um, if mm-hmm. I can, if I can afford it, I'm getting it. You know what I mean. <laughs> It's You're going to laugh at this. You're so good. So the, uh, the other day, I don't know what made me think of this, probably because we've been exploring UAPs, but I got on this topic in my brain about sonic attacks. And here's where I went with it, right? This is a typical day in the life of Father Bliss, right? 
I thought to myself, huh, how would I guard against that? And I think, oh, I know what it was. I was thinking of all these uh, sonic booms and strange vibrations people have been reporting recently on, on Reddit and other communities. And I was like, well, what if it, because sonic weapons are real, right? We know that. I said, okay, what if this is like a directed test or something, right, by a foreign entity? What would I do? And this is, you know, the strange thought processes I go through, right? And I was like, okay, what if I dug an underground bunker in my yard? Because I've got plenty of land. I can do that. <laughs> and then could I actually soundproof it to such a degree that I would be immune to sonic attacks? And then I started thinking, like, how, how big space would I want? And I'm like, but wait, I can, I can network tunnels under all my neighbor's property, too. They wouldn't know. <laughs> They they really wouldn't. Would, there was some crazy man uh, that I think was on 4chan that like paid this other dude to go and like dig tunnels underneath his house. And he was like a multimillionaire. I think uh, Mr. Beast oh did a segment on him. And like there was like a fire in the kids and, 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 and like the uh, there was like a power line there that was like running light throughout the whole cave system but there are like so many dead ends because like they wanted to have like many <laughs> dead ends to <laughs> for safety uh, um and it's a horrible story but um anyway that guy i mean it is he's, yeah. he's in he's in prison and uh that's probably where he belongs uh for somebody more qualified than me to decide i mean you know clearly that's that is, you know, the answer to the to the question. But I don't know. I just I thought it was a funny thought exercise because I was like, I mean, that's what that's like the ultimate stage of where my prepper friends have gone, right? And not that they're going to dig a pit in their backyard and you know make a bunker, but I mean, it's a pretty serious discussion that I've had with multiple communities of friends of mine where they say. I, screw it. I'm done with society. I want to go live in my own commune, for lack of a better descriptive word. You know, fill it with only people that I agree with, right? And then bro down on growing our own food and having your own cattle. And I'm like, that's a great concept, except you guys annoy me multiple times a week. I'm not going to go live with hardly anybody. <laughs> exactly. You know, I've, it yeah, I, I don't it's know. It's not realistic. It's super realistic. And and you think like, okay, so if there was like a sonic whatever, you wonder if you could put that in the drywall and you start marketing that. I, I mean, that's a good point. Yeah. You know what know. I mean? The more mm -hmm. fiscally responsible option. Right. Right. Which I, clearly, I since we're talking about underground bunkers, is the first question that you should you should bring up. <laughs> exactly. Why don't we why don't we retrofit this into drywall? Uh, uh, it's a fun thought exercise, and maybe that's something funny we can do with the listeners later, because um, for the longest time amongst my circle of friends, uh, this is before I met you, we would always, uh, when we met someone new, you know, to see if we wanted to bring him into the circle, right, into our, into our close friend group, we would say, ah, what's your zombie survival plan? Now, this was long before Walking Dead and all that became popular, so at this point, we're all so burnt out on the concept, nobody brings it up anymore. But that was, like, something we seriously brought up. Like, okay, have you thought about this? And it's just, it's funny to look back on that now in context of pandemics and world population shifting and, you know, all these other discussions of going, well, how would you survive? You know, and do you have the skills necessary and you know is it totally a waste of time to know how to sew no i mean that's not it's not the worst skill set to have you know i mean i'm not going to go to the point where i know how to be a blacksmith and make my own you know weaponry but like i know people to do that right and like do you yeah. need to know how to do that yourself or should you just kind of I guess invite, you know, into your close friend group, like people who have relevant specialized skills, right? We talk about this in, in mm -hmm. the context of the workplace because 
at this point in our in our lifetime, you know, generalists are kind of gone, right? Yeah. And you, and you see this all the time in tech or IT or analytics, where you know people are so specialized, medicine, you know, mm. they can't even comment on somebody else's field of study because they they're so narrowly defined. They don't even know how to talk about that. And I I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I, I guess my gut says that's a miss. You know. It, you know, there's. I I think it probably is a miss. I I mean, well, there there are a couple of handbooks, right? So like, there was like, I remember I I didn't read it. I was like, are you kidding me? Just knowing it's there is enough. I, I it's just like, okay, that's great, nice. But there's this guy that like wrote this whole plan for like the U.S. And like how to get out of like every city and like what location to live in, like all mm-hmm. these weird, these weird things, you know, and um, not that they're weird because they're probably practical in some level. Right. I mean, if there was like a fire or whatever, yeah. I mean, there are going to be real events, whether they be, you know, like uh, the Macy's Day Parade, you know, the balloon sure. animal ran away. And he's running down fifth in Maine. We cannot control him. <laughs> I mean, these things have happened. That's, that's not even a weird fantasy like that. No, actually has no. happened. <laughs> yeah. A rogue balloon that could rig <laughs> some havoc, man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if I remember it correctly, I'd have to go double check this, but I seem to recall there's been some pretty funny internet images of um uh, rogue balloons you know like sitting on people and just like some super weird things that you'd think were fantasy but totally happened you know exactly (laughs) you're like dude (laughs) i cannot believe this is the us of a if it was japan i I thought i would have thought it would have been like a theme show or something you know what i mean true that yeah they are so actually i think can we just say that Japan has the best TV, probably. Like, I mean, I think we can. Uh, I think that's conclusive. I yeah. mean, I, like, I feel good. That is reality TV show, guys. Like, mm-hmm. and gals. Like, this is, it's a special. <laughs> you are not wrong. I mean, any I, of their strange game shows and things. There's, I've never seen anything come close to that. Yeah, that's the marketing, pure madness, dude. The marketing genius is pure gold. Uh, well, and like just the fact that there's there's legitimately situations that people will put themselves into that are, I mean, they're dangerous. It's not just, <laughs> and that's, I, I suppose, part of what makes it so amusing for the rest of us to watch. But then again, I mean, look, there's a whole, there's a whole society of people that watch NASCAR just for a car to explode or something, right? Like they don't want them to get seriously hurt. But they want that weird moment of drama that's like so strange that you're like, but we're watching this from our our standpoint as is, is not you know huge fans of that. Going, what are you doing? What do you want to see people get seriously injured? Like this doesn't even make any sense. Right, you are, Ken. The gypsy tears are just that much more sweet. It's true. It's, it's true. It, I, well. It just, in- I, I, I I'm always fascinated by it, honestly. But Sam, um Sam. like did you ever see the one where it's like you have to be quiet in the library? No. no so, I not. so they try to make everybody laugh and do crazy what? things in the library and it's a real library. That's like oh it's God. the crazy things. So like everybody laughs and everybody's like shh, shh, shh. <laughs> it, it's like it's, yeah. it's it's the funniest thing. It it's actually pretty good. It's worth it's no. it's worth watching. No, I feel like I want to combine that with Jackass somehow. Like, there's got to be a... See, that's the next level. We just discovered it right now. You ready for this? Next level reality stuff is show crossovers. Mark my words. Heard it here today. Right? Where we start actually, like, having... Because they do it all the time with other shows. You know, if you think about, like, fictional shows... I mean, they totally do that where you have like the crossovers. That's that's the uh, the penultimate. You know? you know what? You're probably <laughs> right because you know, like <laughs> if you go and look at uh, the what was it? Arrow, I think it was mm-hmm. like Arrow. Mm-hmm. So they had like they got the Flash in there. They got like, I mean, a lot of cast members, right? Yeah, 
and, oh, and they yeah. had like all every single one of them had like a spinoff show. I think it was like open season on the WB, you know? Absolutely. You know, and this is a topic for another day because this isn't something we normally discuss. So I'm not sure I feel educated on it, but we were discussing and making some just kind of goofy jokes this weekend with a bunch of our friends. And, uh, my wife and I are huge Marvel fans. I grew up on Marvel and DC, right? So I don't, I don't really feel partial to either one, although I probably like Marvel better, you know, but whatever. But it was funny because my wife was candidly mocking DC because <laughs> historically don't have the same level of success as Marvel, um, especially in the last decade, you know, from a movie standpoint. And our friends didn't get it. They were legitimately offended. Like, what do you mean? She's like, well, I just feel like DC characters are kind of goofy and people don't take it seriously. And they expect the movies to fail. And they were looking at her like she was completely, you know, just grew a second head. And I thought it was funny. I was like, pretty sure we can back that one up with box office sales in fact but okay that's fine that's fine <laughs> i mean like i was still waiting okay so i don't like any of the marvels just right. because i don't know they make they like let me down because like that was like my childhood man like sure i remember like saving up money or doing you know like odd jobs or whatever and like we'd go and take the MTR in Hong Kong hmm. and, uh, you know, sometimes I'd maybe even get a good book report. So maybe I could be allowed to go on the MTR and then we'd make our way over to like Stanley market and then I'd go, or I, I don't know. I'd, I'd go to whatever the comics shop. It wasn't in Stanley, but anyway, regardless, and, like, there was just this big moment, right? Like, oh, did I get the holographic? Oh, my gosh. Do I do I trade this? Do I take it? Do I take it to the recess? Is this going to the recess? Or am I going to use a couple of chocolate koalas to entice my next card? Like, I, I mean, like, these were real things, man. Like, I, I still remember airheads, the white airheads, and the blue airheads sold the most mm -hmm. on... Mm -hmm. on on the streets of the playground, you know, next to the slide. The, the mean slide. streets. I mean, you could have probably auctioned your jeans off for a song over there because that's always been a meme with, you know, American jeans in Russia. So, well, hey, my friend, I should let you go. Uh, it is about time for the dinner bell to ring here okay. in the Father Bliss household. So we will have to close for today. That sounds like a plan. But. We've got much homework. We've talked about some good, juicy topics. Um, you know, the father's blessed us with a, a fantastic story this evening. Um, and I, I guess my last call out, uh, to be fair, I did like Wolverine. That was really good. But Gambit, man, what, what the heck? There's never been a good Gambit. Ever. And I agree. I agree. He was absolutely one of my favorites. Um, I loved Gambit. Loved it. Loved it, the concept. Loved the character. It's the best. I, I think never seen a good adaptation. Never. No, you're right. Never. You're but right. to be continued, folks. Thanks for checking to out be. Trick and Father FTW. We film the world. Thank you for checking in.